called me. I'm sitting behind the cash register in an East Village bookstore on St. Mark's Place near 2nd Avenue looking at a postcard that's taped to the wall of Ann Waldman topless. That's for you, Big Mike. It's been there a long time, but I've never actually read the message she wrote on it. So I'm kind of distracted, and I almost don't notice a guy duck into the office where the manager's bike is chained to a desk. I'm alone in the store, and I don't think Ann Waldman will be coming to my rescue. The guy comes out of the office, wheeling the bicycle. He must have cut the lock somehow. Hey, I shout at him as he approaches the door. That doesn't belong to you. Put it back where you found it. He leans the bike against the shelf of books and walks slowly over to where I'm perched on my stool. Gripping the edge of the counter, I look down at him. He's short and stinks of alcohol. His eyes glazed over, but he lashes out lightning fast with a knife that sinks into the top of my right hand. The blade gets stuck in the cartilage and he can't pull it out. So he simply lets go and stands there motionless like a toy whose battery has died. There must be something seriously wrong with me because I suddenly find myself lecturing this neighborhood junkie. I could do anything I want to you, I tell him, picking up the club we have under the counter and waving it for emphasis. You're small and drunk and stupid. I could probably even kill you and get away with it, but that would be pointless. I yank the knife out of my hand and give it back to him. Just get the fuck out of here. I know I'm stupid. He exits the store, slashing some flyers posted near the door as he does so, leaving me and Ann Waldman alone again. Uh, this is called Bird and Me, and I was lucky it was published in the Great Weather for Media Anthology. <laughs> um, I read somewhere that Charlie Parker ate a rose. I think it happened after a long flight to Denmark or France. A delegation of important dignitaries approached him on the runway and offered him a fancy bouquet as a gift. I figure it must have been both tired and pumped up a little after such a long flight. So popping the flower into his mouth probably seemed like the perfect thing to do, a way to fuck with the squares and further embellish his legend at the same time. Years later, in a far different corner of the world, I ate a flower too. I was drinking in Rosinante, a neighborhood bar in Soho, trying to win back the love of my ex-wife. As we chatted, I got so nervous I downed at least six white Russians. In that state, I told her, I'm going to do what Bird did to show you how much I still care. Then I plucked a flower out of the vase that was on the table between us and stuffed it into my mouth. It was chewy at first, and a sharp chemical taste kicked in. I found out later they spray those things to make them last. Shaking, I sprinted to the bathroom and became violently sick. I can't remember ever feeling worse. I really thought that something had broken inside me. My ex-wife leaned in the door to ask if I was okay, and when I grunted, yeah, she said she had to split. She'd had a lovely evening, but had to work tomorrow. Thank you. Oh.